Hello, my name is Brent Keith, and today I will be going through the one-player tutorial of Furtherance. So the one-player setup is similar to the two to four player setup. Um, so I recommend you are familiar with the rules for the two to four player game. If you are not already, I recommend any of the tutorials that are listed on our Kickstarter page or on our YouTube page um, for you to look at or to look at the rulebook. Um, this video will strictly be going through some of the differences for the one player version and some of the automation for how opposing units are spawned and move through the one player game. So the first thing for a one player game of course is setup. So setup is pretty similar to a two to four player game. Um, there are a few minor differences, one of which being that only you have a victory point counter, but everyone has a health counter. So all of the castles are going to start with 10 HP. However, you are the only castle that is going to worry about victory points because none of the AI opponents are going to be collecting victory points throughout the game. Your ultimate goal in the game will be to get to four victory points before you are eliminated by the other players who are rushing in to attack you. Uh, similar to a two to four player beginner game, you will start with the game with two workers. This is the same for all of the difficulties. The differences for the difficulties are in the number of time counters that will go on the opposing castle across from you. In this case, I have placed 15 time counters on the opposing castle. Um, this is because for this tutorial, I am just going to be going through the easy mode of the game so that you can see how the game works. Um, However, you are allowed to adjust the time counters accordingly. Um, for easy mode, it is recommended for 15 counters. For normal mode, it's recommended 10. And for hard mode, it is recommended at 5 counters. So, basically for this game, um, the play will be pretty similar to what you would play in a 2-4 player game, except you will now have enemy units that are spawning in castles and trying to rush into you. One of the differences for that is that your castle actually does not have any walls in this game, so enemy units will be able to walk straight through. Um, another difference for the setup is the unit pile. You will actually be removing both of the arsonists, so arsonists will not be used in this game. The reason for that is because the enemy will never spawn an arsonist due to the fact that it has zero attack, and the arsonist cannot be used by you to go destroy other players' buildings because the enemy AI do not have any buildings and will not build any buildings throughout the game. Um, for leader selection, in a normal game, you would be drafting leaders. However, in this game, you will shuffle the leaders and draw one off the top of the deck. In this case, I have drawn Ivan the Intelligent. So I will be using him for this tutorial. And, yeah. After that, everything is set up and ready to go. As usual, you will start with four gold, and then you will take your first turn. So you will have your workers perform their actions for the first turn. You will turn them as they perform those actions, and then you will begin spawning units for the other players. So when another player spawns a unit, the way spawning works is they will first check in their research. Whenever one of their units dies, it will be added to their research to be respawned in their castle later on. In this case, this player does not have any units in their research, so they will check the top of the unit stack. If the unit has more than zero attack, which in this case we drew an archer and it has one attack, then the unit will be spawned. If the unit only has zero attack, then the unit will be placed on the bottom of the unit stack, and a u new unit will be drawn and checked. Um, this will continue, of course, until you find a unit with more than zero attack. If you end up with a unit stack that only has units with zero attack, you will shuffle the discarded units into the unit stack and keep drawing. So. In this case, the archer was spawned, as in a regular game, whenever a new unit is spawned, they will get the new unit counter, and even the enemy units cannot move or attack the turn they are spawned. So, this player's turn is now over, because they have no other units to place. The player across from you will remove one of their time counters. When they do, they will place it on the player next to you's castle. Um, so in this case, the stag moved their time counter over to the wolf castle, and they will continue accumulating time counters until this castle is done. Once the final time counter is removed from this, the next turn the stag will begin spawning units as well. So you will have to face units from this castle and units from this castle. Once that occurs, this castle will begin removing its time counters, and once the final time counter is removed, we'll start spawning units as well. So you will start the game fighting against one castle, 
then two castles, and eventually three castles, um, with the goal of, again, defending until you manage to get to four victory points, or you manage to eliminate all opposing castles. When you take an enemy castle down to zero HP, you will not receive a second worker or any victory points in the one-player version. Instead, you will just stop that castle from being able to spawn any more units to come and attack you. However, if you do attack a castle that is currently um, waiting to spawn units, you will also remove one time counter every time you deal a damage to that castle. So if you were to walk across and attack the stag's castle, then you would have to not only take their HP down to 9, but you would also have to move one of their time counters over to the castle on the right. Um, if you attack the castle on the right, you would just remove one of their time counters and place it off to the side of the board. So, that is how attacking opposing castles in the one-player version works. Um, so this was the first turn, so we only had one unit to spawn. However, on the next turn, after you um, untap and use both of your workers once again, you will then move and attack with all opposing units. So the castle on your left will take their turn first. Each castle has its own path that it takes for its units. So the castle to the left will take the path forward and down toward your castle. The castle across from you will just go straight toward your castle, and the castle to the right will go straight and down. These castles will never have their units cross each other's paths and will never get in each other's way. Of course, your units can get in their way, and when they do, their units will attack your units. So, whenever there is a case in which one of their units can attack one of your units, they will. So, for example, if you were to decide to spawn this fighter, and you manage to move this fighter to the center of the board. When this player goes, they will move the archer up one space, and then since the archer can attack two spaces away, the archer would stop and immediately shoot at the fighter. Units cannot move after they attack, so this archer would stop its movement there, deal the one damage, and then after all of this player's units have moved, they will spawn a new unit off the top of the unit's deck. Um, units will always move their max amount, but of course, if they run into an enemy unit at anywhere on a square around them at which they can attack, they will immediately attack that unit. However, if there is a case in which one of their units has multiple units to attack, they will choose those units in a clockwise order. So, the archer, for example, currently only has the fighter to attack. However, if you had more units, such as another archer and a juggernaut, the archer would attack first the unit that is in front of it, and then would go clockwise from there. So the order in which this archer would attack would be first the fighter, then once the fighter is dead, it would attack the archer, and then once the archer is dead, it would attack the juggernaut. Of course, this would take several turns to take place. However, that is the standard order in which all enemy units will fight. They will fight whatever unit is in front of them and then go clockwise from there. So the player across from you will attack downward and then move clockwise, and the player to the right of you will attack to the left and then move clockwise. By knowing exactly where your opposing units are going to move and attack, you can plan your defense accordingly in order to build it in such a way that you can survive and hopefully reach four victory points before they come and eliminate you. So, their units will move as far as they can each turn um, and slowly move in toward your castle. Of course, they will stop whenever they hit a unit. However, once they hit your castle, they will stop as well. Um, the archer, actually, in this case, will stop here because it can shoot your castle from a distance. So it will stop whenever it can make an attack and begin firing. Um, if you have a unit in your castle, then the... Since the archer can attack the juggernaut from this distance, it will shoot the juggernaut first before shooting the castle. However, if there was a case where you had a unit in another square, the archer cannot reach the juggernaut but can reach the castle, so the archer will shoot at the castle. As with a regular 2-4 to four player game, um, your units can also defend your castle. So in this case, when the archer shoots the castle, the juggernaut can choose to defend and take the damage in the castle's place. So... That is pretty much it for the one-player version. All of the victory point cards are still in play, so whether you want to use Excalibur or Holy Grail, Church, City Park, um, Flag Bearer, any of those options are available for, to you 
to collect victory points and try to get to four and win the game. You can also, of course, win the game by eliminating all opposing castles by taking their castles down to zero HP. All right, that concludes this video tutorial. I will be doing a walkthrough video after this so that you can see exactly um, what a step-by-step -step one player game would look like with all of those rules. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment on the Kickstarter page or on this video itself. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it.